Hey guys, this is Trey Sykes with Camwood Bats, and I'm here with Wes Helms, 13-year MLB vet. And uh, Wes, the first thing I wanted to start off with is uh, you were drafted by the Braves, right? And you got called up in the middle of their pennant run. What did they do, like 14 or 15 straight titles, division titles? Yeah, I was right in the middle of it. And uh, so you were in there with the likes of the Chipper Jones and company. Uh, how was it watching those guys train in the cages and get ready to uh, play a game? Um, it was pretty special. I was actually very blessed to come up with those guys to watch how they train and, and kind of went about the business on a daily basis. Uh, you know, it was all about paying attention to detail. It wasn't about the quantity of the swings. Uh, it was about the quality. Uh, you know, every swing off the tee, every swing off short toss had a purpose. Um, it wasn't just get, you know, getting in the cage to get loose. There was no such thing as that. It was, I'm going in there, locking in, take it into the game. And, you know, pretty much 95 to 99 percent of the guys on that team watching them train every day just you know it was hard line drives to the you know back corners or back uh back of the um the batting cage there was no pulling the ball there was no inside out it was straight just drive the ball back where it came from yeah and uh, back in the day like there was there was no launch angle there was no hitting the ball into the top of the net I mean, everything was – they were working on that proper back pad, staying in the zone a long time and just drilling it into the back of the cage. Uh, I said, that's – It did. It taught them extension. It taught them keeping their uh, barrel through the zone as long as possible. You know, it wasn't in and out of the zone or it wasn't dragging through the zone. It was, you know, in the zone and it stayed through the zone on the, on the plane of the baseball. And that's how we were taught to hit and it was successful. And that's the, I mean, back in the day, that's when batting averages were much higher than they are today, and that's why. Because, you know, they were getting that barrel in the zone the entire time and not uh, pulling out and pulling off the ball. 100%. I mean, uh, you know, the way I look at it, batting averages were so much higher back then than they are today. Home runs, yeah, I mean, there, there are more home runs overall in today's game, but you got to understand the guys are so much stronger today. It's not the swings. It's the strength of the guys, the training of the – of professional athletes are so much different than it was back then. So, you know, it's not the, it's not the difference of the swing. It's the either difference of the strength in the athlete. Exactly. And uh, towards the end of your career, uh, you actually came across the Camwood bat and you were a Camwood user yourself. Love the Camwood bat. Uh, you know, I kind of got, you know, I was with the Florida Marlins in spring training one year and saw it just laying in the cage, picked it up, started hitting off the tee with it. And <laughs> started to feel how my hands were working and I was like man this this feels awesome I mean you know it, it just it just kind of pieced everything together for me uh you know I was always a top hand dominant hitter so you know the cam would taught me you know just to get the hands in the slot and stay through the zone better not let the top hand take my barrel out of the zone and uh, I fell in love with it I used it religiously after I found it you know till the end of my career exactly like I said, that's what the cam would teach. It teaches, you know, get your hands in that slot and teaches, you know, to lead with the hands, let the barrel follow naturally through the zone. Exactly. Uh, was there a bunch of players with the Marlins using the bat whenever you were using it? Yeah, some guys. Uh, actually, I started using it, and then, uh, you know, Andy Barquette started, started getting a hold of it, which he was the assistant hitting coach of Boston there. Uh, for a little while. And then, uh, you know, guys uh, like Brett Carroll and Chris Coughlin, you know, of course, I was on, there was a lot of younger guys that were, were there when I was there. So, um, you know, they, they would pick it up and, uh, you know, they just loved the way it felt, man. I mean, you know, of course, back then, that's when it was just first coming out. So nobody knew what it was, yep. uh, and, you know, and some of the pro guys were like, you know, what, what is this? But they never even tried it. And, you know, once they saw me do it, then, you, you know, you had a handful of guys, you know, pick it up and start using it. So now that your career is over and you're the AAA coach for the White Sox, right? Yeah, I'm going to manage the AAA team in Charlotte this year. Yeah. So what is uh, one thing when you're watching your players and other just players in general, it could be youth or it could be pro guys, what is the number one flaw that you see in people's swings uh, nowadays? Um, the, the two things I'm really seeing is they're tra trying to create lift behind their body and then their barrels are in and out of the zone so quick. So their room for error, like, I mean, they got to be in one spot at the exact time. To, yeah, perfect timing. Yes, there is no room for error. And I'm starting to – that's why strikeouts are at such a high level now, that, 
you know, it's either you're going to hit a home run or you're going to strike out. And, you know, I understand, you know, you get paid to hit home runs. But, you know, I'm all about winning ball games and being consistent. And consistency wins. So, for me, if you can build a consistent bat path um, and, you know, you create strength in the weight room, you're going to hit your home runs. I mean, they're going to yeah. be there. So, uh, yeah. But the two flaws are they're trying to create lift, you know, behind their bodies and they're not staying in the zone long enough. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing with me, just watching kids and um, even pro guys is they get to the contact point and they just take their barrel straight up out of the zone. So like you they said, do. they got to be perfectly on time in order to barrel that up. Whereas, you know, your hitters like Rod Carew and your Tony Gwynn's, you know, they're known as slap hitters, but they could be fooled, but their barrel's in the zone for such a long period of time that they can still barrel that up and do something with it. And that's why I love Miguel Cabrera so much. By far my favorite hitter as a professional. And, you know, he perfects that. He can drive a ball 420 to right center just as easy as he can to left center. And it's because that barrel stays yeah. going all the way throughout. Exactly. And what that does, it enables you to make in-swing adjustments. And some, right. of, some of the guys nowadays don't, don't agree with that when it comes to, you know, you can't adjust your swing once it starts. Yeah, you can. You, your eyes are going to tell the bat what to do once it sees the pitch. And if you aren't in the slot and your bat is not in the zone as long as possible, you can't make adjustments to, you know, differential in speed and, you know, spin. And, you know, those are the things that, you know, hitters struggle with. Is you got to be in that one spot at the right time. But if it's a little out front or a little behind, if, you, if your path isn't where it needs to be, then you're not going to square the ball up. And, you know, so for me, it's all about consistency of that path. If that path is where it needs to be and you your eyes are recognizing the pitch, you're going to hit. Exactly. Yep. And I said, you've been training with your kids. I know you're working with a lot of the high school kids lately with uh, all the quarantine stuff happening. But um, so you train them with the cam wood and you get to where their hands are in that good slot and their hands are leading. And um, once they get more consistent with their hand placement, well, now you got to work on the visualization of barreling the ball up and getting that sweet spot to the ball, correct? Exactly. And, yes. And um, so y'all came up with a bat called the Sweet Spot Bat, right? We did. We did. Our whole process behind this was, you know, our whole thought process in hitting is if we can deliver the sweet spot to the ball as consistent as possible, you're going to hit in some capacity. Yeah. And, you know, I think as a majority of youth hitters, and I'm seeing it in college and even the young professional guys of today, you know, they don't really think, in terms of consistency, all they are, they're either all or, or nothing. And, yeah. you know, for me, you know, the Camwood bat, you know, what it did for me was teach my hands to get into the slot and get down into the hitting position the right way. And then the eyes are going to tell the barrel where to go. The eyes are going to see the pitch. It's going to tell the barrel where to go. So uh, Steve Renfro and myself um, came up with the sweet spot bat, which – you know, is a bat with a raised sweet spot, and it's red for a reason. It's basically going to work with your mind. Your mind is going to know where the sweet spot of the bat is. So once your hands get into the slot, now the eyes are going to tell the barrel where to go. And when the eyes see the pitch, the mind works with the sweet spot on the bat and delivers the sweet spot straight to the ball. So the whole process is all mental. It's all an approach. It's nothing changing of mechanics, yeah. you know, a thought process of changing mechanics, the approach is changing the mechanics. So, you know, your mind is telling the sweet spot of the bat to go straight to the baseball, which in, therefore is creating that bat path through the zone. Yeah. And, see, and that's the one thing whenever I saw y'all's bat, uh, it really intrigued me because that sweet spot bat just works perfectly with the cam wood because, you know, the cam wood teaches that the hands in that slot and the hands lead and then y'all's bat comes in and you really teach and learn that visualization of getting that barrel and that sweet spot to the ball. Exactly. I mean, for me in, in hitting, you know, there's two parts. The first one is, you know, you know you're, you're going to start the process of the swing, which is to get into the slot. And then the next one is deliver the barrel. Yep. So, therefore, the two bats are going to complement each other. Exactly. The camp bat's getting us to the slot, the sweet spot bat is getting us to the ball and through the baseball. So – they complement each other so well that, uh, you know, it basically puts 
you know, the hitter in the right position and also in the right position once he gets to the baseball. Exactly. So whenever y'all invented the sweet spot bat, you started using it with the kids there in the high school first, I would assume. And uh, yes. what are some of the results that y'all started seeing instantly with people training with it? Um, the biggest thing for us is, you know, 90 to 95% of the hitters we get when we get them as high school players before we've even worked with them is they are around everything. They are around and out front. They think they have to go get the ball. They, they want to get out front. They're afraid to get beat is what it is. So the sweet spot bat basically changed their whole mindset. We put it in the hands of kids, and it's amazing how we tell them, hey, look, the red part of the sweet spot right here, let's take that directly to the baseball. And we don't say anything else about mechanics or anything. We, we basically say – take the red sweet spot of the bat to the ball as consistent as possible. And it's amazing to me in the few swings that they take, how many just get it. I mean, and they start staying through the zone longer, inside, outside. You know, the sweet spot is going straight to the baseball, and they're not trying to create anything different with their shoulders, with their legs, or anything. Uh, it basically just puts them in line every single time. So whenever I came down into Birmingham with y'all, I actually swung the bat in the cage. And one of the big things that I liked about it is whenever you don't hit the ball in the sweet spot, you could feel it, you know. Um, if you would, I want you to talk a little bit about that and the feel of whenever you barrel the ball up versus whenever you just miss hit one. Yeah, and that was the whole point of us creating this bat was we wanted a game-like bat, the weight, the length. We wanted it to feel like a game bat so that – you know, first of all, it feels like a normal bat. It doesn't feel like a training tool. We wanted to feel the handle, everything like a normal wooden bat. Um, the second thing was we wanted to be that when you do connect with the baseball, you know right away if you hit it on the sweet spot or if you hit it off the sweet spot a little or if you didn't hit the sweet spot. So that was our whole process behind the, the, behind the bat was to feel the ball when it hits the sweet spot, which creates muscle memory. And therefore, that was our whole thought process behind it. And it's amazing that, you know, after uh, Camwa created the, the bat for us, it totally gave us that when we, when we started hitting with it in the cage. You totally feel if you hit it or don't hit it on the sweet spot. Yeah. And how do you all use it with y'all's kids? Is it just cage work or is it T work? What is it? Okay, so we started off – we took baby steps. We started off – with the tee. We wanted them to fill it off the tee and everything. And of course, off the tee, you're going to fill it, you know, on a, on a minimum, on a small scale. Yeah. Then we graduated to short, underhand short toss, you know, um, and that's when you really can feel, you know, if you hit the sweet spot or not, because the ball's got a little uh, movement on it. So we always like to take the kids from tee first and then to short toss. And then we actually graduated to our high school kids. We started doing overhand short toss where I would sit in a chair and, yeah. you know, back the L screen up a little and just do overhand short toss where it's not too hard. They got a little firmness to it so they could really, you know, feel it when it hit the bat. Yeah. And I know some coaches, well, uh, pop into their head when they see this bat that have never used it before, they're going to try to use that to uh, teach bunting, you know, because it's a bigger sweet spot and they're going to try to teach – bunting with that bat but uh do y'all ever do that with y'all's kids we don't we don't now don't get me wrong i do think it would be a good tool for bunting but on a safety standpoint i don't think it's good um just because with 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 the raised area if you did bunt a ball in this area that's that's basically got a chance to shoot back at a kid's face or you know toward their body so we basically, you know, put on there, you know, no bunting just, just because it was more of a safety thing than, uh, than a training thing. Yeah. And one thing I was thinking about with y'all's bat is, you know, it complements the cam wood very well. And as you know, you've done our drills. Uh, there's a thing that we do called two and twos where, you know, you take two swings with one bat and you take two swings with another. Yes. This is where I think that the sweet spot bat and the cam wood would really come together is – you take two swings with the camel at bat to really teach getting those hands in that slot. And then you take the, uh, the sweet spot bat for two swings and you really get that visualization of barreling that ball up. And if you alternate those two, that's where you're going to create that good swing of that proper bat bat. 
hundred percent. I'm a big believer in marrying drills together. Yes. Uh, I totally think, you know, their drills should be done uh, individually, but if you can start, you know, marrying drills together to make the mind think outside the box and not just be stuck on one thing at that given moment. Yeah, it totally, I mean, we're athletes and, you know, we're not robots. So if we can create a mindset and a, and a body that adapts and adjusts to different situations, then we're going to become better hitters. We're going to become better players. And that's what Marion drills do. I mean, it, it makes you take these drills and do, you know, two different things at one time, bounce them back and forth. Now the mind's thinking like this instead of just in one little area. And it's going to totally change how many results that you get out of the drills. Yeah. All right, and for any of you guys that actually want to try out this sweet spot bat, uh, I'm going to put the link up in the description of this video. So all you got to do is click that link. It'll take you straight to the site, and uh, you'll be able to select what size. So we always say, you know, train with the same length bat that you swing in game. So if you swing the 29-inch game bat, get a 29-inch sweet spot bat, okay? And, uh, Wes, I'd like to thank you for coming on here and uh, sharing your knowledge of hitting and uh, training with me. Yeah, man, I enjoyed it. Love hitting and love uh, sharing my knowledge. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you.